pushing this false rumor mill that we're going to pull the, the plug on grandma if this health care reform bill goes back through. And the president may not have been wrong, Senator, because you did say those exact words about how Americans shouldn't have to worry about pulling the plug on grandma. Uh, were you adding unnecessary fuel to this fire? Well, first of all, I was answering a question for a very concerned constituent at one of my town meetings. And I, I let my town meeting set the agenda. So I was not making a statement. But I have had very strong views for about four months during this debate that I'm not going to do anything with a health care bill that puts a, a government bureaucrat or any government policy of making a determination of whether or not we are going to uh, value life at the end of life any more than at age 30 or 20. But I uh, think that uh, there's a bigger goal that they have here, and that is a diversion away from what's really wrong with the Pelosi bill, because I was responding to something in the Pelosi bill, not something we're going to do in the Senate Finance Committee where I'm... Uh, uh, working on on health care. Well, we know. Uh, and let, what, let me just what, jump in because we know that you in the Senate, you you don't have a similar proposal about these end of life consultations, but yeah. that is something that's in the Pelosi bill on the House side. And I think if, the, if those Democrats behind that bill were sitting here now, Senator, they would say you are scaring people because it's not a mandatory, you know, yeah. doctor tells you it's time to pull the plug kind of consultation. They're just trying to help elderly people make plans for the end of life yeah. as not not trying to make them, but tr but trying to get them uh, yeah. the care and, the, and, and to pay for it if they want to have that meeting with their doctor. Your response. And, and do you know that I would tell them that they're diverting from the real issues of the Pelosi bill, which is uh, the government takeover of health care, uh, exploding the deficits because it's not paid for and it's got high taxes in it. And uh, uh, they're not doing anything to reduce inflation. And I think that this is what a president or a speaker of the House has to do when they have a miserably poor uh, health care bill that's not being received by the people. So what they try to do is divert attention, and they've done a very good job of diverting attention, and they're intellectually dishonest uh, when they say it, because all of their uh, proposals uh, dealing with end of life are connecting bills with ways of, of saving money and take over national health care. And you see what goes on in other countries. And I don't want that to happen in the United States, that we treat life at, the, at age 85 different than we do life at 35. Okay, but the president would say he doesn't want that either. And your critics have pointed to your vote in, in favor of this Medicare bill back in 2003 that included what they say is a similar provision that would, that would, provide, that would pay for end-of-life consultations between a patient and her doctor. Not mandatory, but, would, but if the patient wants it, they'll pay for it. Uh, and that you supported that. And now to come out and suggest that, that, that a similar plan by you know, the House Democrats is pulling the plug on grandma is really unfair of you. How do you respond to the charge? Well, I'm glad to respond to that, because if you read the committee report from 2003, you will find out that we were talking just in the very narrow area of hospice care. And, uh, and uh, managing pain uh, was a very important thing in that as well. Nothing to do with saving money. And, uh, and when, when you get into uh, what their goals are in the House bill, it's to save money. And not only that, but it cost $8 billion. And we never had anything like that uh, in the bill in 2003. And your concern is, is the plan to save money and cut costs coupled with these end-of-life consultations raises questions, I guess. And coupled with government takeover of health care. And that's a really end product of the House bill that has a government-run plan. And the Lewin think tank in Washington says, that 120 million people are going to crowd out into that plan. And when they crowd out, uh, premiums go up, and pretty soon everybody else leaves. And pretty soon you have the government running our health care, and the American people don't want that. Senator Grassley, before I let you go, i got to ask you about Ken Conrad's comments on uh, Fox News Sunday. Do you agree with him? He's part of your gang of six in the Senate working on this bill, that there is no way uh, a public option or a government-run option is going to pass in the Senate. Yes, I agree with him, except for we're not a gang of six. I don't like gangs. I'm a group <laughs> of six, and we're trying to get a bipartisan uh, uh, cooperation. And one of those things is not to have a government-run health plan because it leads to nationalization, and Kent Conrad is absolutely right. That couldn't get through the House of Representatives.
group member, not gang member, Senator Chuck Grassley. Thanks for calling in. Thanks for being with us.